Hello everyone, my name is Mohsen Minayi Javid. I'm a PhD student at Tufts University, and my presentation on experimental study on concrete fatigue capacity. So, this is the outlines of my uh, presentation due to the limitation of time. I just skipped that. So this project is got, got funded by Department of Energy. The reason for that is uh, recent offshore wind turbine developments, and they, we are looking on fatigue capacity of concrete. Why is that? Why concrete? Because concrete is more cost effective. Uh, it has a lot of advantages, such as, I mean, creating a lot of uh, local job. Uh, we can cast it in any shape. Uh, the offshore wind platforms ha have endured for decades without any problem. So the PI for this project is Professor Kuchma. Uh, I'm working under him uh, as a PhD student. There are other, uh, I mean, people involved in this project, as you can see on this slide. So the concrete is used for precast, pre-stress, or post-stress uh, towers for the uh, onshore wind turbines. For the offshore wind turbines, there are some gravity-based foundations uh, suggested and built in UK. These are the some, uh, this is, for example, a uh, theoretical uh, design. It's getting used for the floating offshore wind turbines as well, and also the gravity-based anchors for the floating ones. There are other use, for example, the ice cones, and also grouts in the transition piece for the monopiles and the towers. So in this uh, slide, I'm showing the cyclic loading on concrete. We have a, uh, I mean, loading at top. We, we are measuring the strain at two sides. This, is, this plot shows the stress on the vertical axis and the strain on the horizontal axis. This curve or parabola is the stress strain response on the monotonic, strain, monotonic uh, test. And the cyclic loading or fatigue loading can be compressive tensile cycle or pure compression with different ranges. And these are some results from Sam Shekhar Wisawana, who worked, who worked uh, under Professor Kuchma before. This plot shows the, uh, I mean, the fatigue capacity of uh, welded plates. So in this plot, we have the number of cycles to failure on the horizontal axis and the stress range on the vertical axis. And both of them are shown in the log based, log based on 10. And it shows that the results of the number of cycles for a specific stress range varies by, I mean, four folds for a specific stress range. So for concrete, we show this fatigue capacity in a different way. So we have the number of cycle on the horizontal axis, which is log base 10. But on the vertical axis, we have the maximum applied stress in the cycle divided by monotonic strain stress capacity. And for different minimum stress for the cyclic, we have different curves. This curve comes from uh, model code developed by FIB. So we have uh, created a database. We have uh, gathered a database from the previous works. Uh, so this is only characteristic SN curve, uh, including the uniaxial testing with the S mean of 5% with different SMAX. You see the variation of the results are much, much more higher than uh, steel. What does it mean? So for example, if you want to design based on the, this database, you can say your structure can, I mean, tolerate your load for one year or more than one year up to five, 50 years. So it's, it's very different. So uh, also we are showing three different models, Eurocode, model code, and DNVGL. So the prediction of the number of cycle based on these models are different as well. So there are some variation as well. So the reason for this variation is the loading protocol, frequency, type of 
uh, wave load, uh, the concrete itself. But uh, it seems that there is an interesting thing in the testing that we can do to reduce this variation. So this plot also shows different S mean levels. So if we have the monotonic uh, compressive stress strain curve for a typical concrete that we have. So we do this for five or 10 specimens, we have a variation there. The coefficient of variation is 2%. So it means that if we take the average strengths as our representative strengths and we define our loading protocol based off of that, and we say we want to load up to S max of 80% and S mean of 20%. Using model code uh, of FIB, we get the number of cycle of 10,000. So if we were off by 5%, the actual loading rate that we have is 84% and 21%, and the number of cycle is about 2,000. And if we are higher, it's 54. So Model code predicts fivefold different based on this variation. So if we could guesstimate the strengths of concrete, we would have lower range of results. So we suggested let's have the average strengths, and we define our Smax based off of that. The loading rate for the uh, cyclic loading is very high. It's about 200 psi to 1,000 psi per second, but for the uh, stress, I mean, static loading, ASTM C39 says 35 PSI per second. So we said we load up to a SMAX based off of that average strength with this standard rate, and we take that stress strain response, we plot it with, this, with our uh, previous monotonic test, and we guesstimate the strengths based off of that. So the results were, were I mean, very had a very low range, and it was very, I mean, impressive compared to the database that we had. We also put two the GoPro camera on two sides of the concrete, and along the testing, we took pictures every few seconds, and we see that the first visual damage that we see on the concrete is around the strain corresponding to the stre stress strength that we have. And this can be used for the monitoring purposes. So we said, let's see the effect of saturation, and let's see the effect of having reinforcement, longitudinal reinforcement on the, in the cylinder that we have. So we put some reinforcement. We put some plain concrete into the uh, water. And after a few months, we test them. So saturation decreased the fatigue capacity by fourfold, and uh, the reinforcement increased that by 12-fold on average. So for saturation, it's pretty somehow clear that the pore pressure has an effect to reduce the cap fatigue capacity. But, uh, but for, I mean, the reinforcement, uh, let me skip this slide, for the reinforcement, Let's see, we have this stress strain response of the uh, I mean, reinforced cylinder that we had. And these are the cycles of loading every 5% up, up to the failure. And we see that the maximum strain is developing more faster than minimum strain. So we have concrete softening there. So it also means that our load share is changing over uh, time. So in this slide, we have the monotonic axial strengths. Part of it is, comes from concrete. Part of it comes from the uh, steel reinforcement. We initially thought that this is the load share of the steel. This is the load share of concrete. But we, when we go further, the load share changes. Why is that? That's because we have strain development, the, the steel absorbs more load. And so here, this is only the load carried by concrete in the particular cylinder that we had. So the load share of concrete decreases until we reach to the yield point of the steel, and at, after that, 
steel has a constant load share and the concrete has a constant load share. What does it mean if we divide this part like this? We have different SMAX and SMIN for a few cycle and it decreases and it decreases. So based off of that, we can uh, calculate the damage in the concrete. So for damage, we use Palmgren minus rule, which is the, uh, I mean, the number of cycle that uh, it experienced divided by the number of cycle predicted by the model code. If we do that for each, I mean, SMAX and SMIN combination, we have this utilization. If we add them up, it's about uh, 0 0.3, but uh, the code says uh, it should be one until damage, so it, it fails much sooner. And it also shows that the few cycles earlier that we have here consumes the capacity much higher than the lower cycles which have we had about uh, 10,000 cycles. So it, this 365 cycle consumed about 40% and this 10,000 cycle just consumed 4% of this uh, capacity. So the reinforcement has an effect. We have to see it, but the code says just consider the concrete separately and the reinforcement separately. And also, we use that method to see the visual damage where it occurs. So it's around the yield stress of the, yield strain of the uh, reinforcement. So uh, it's an important thing. We want to continue on that. We want to do uh, x-ray uh, to see the internal damage as well and wh when it occurs. So we can use it for the mon uh, I mean, monitoring purposes. So, uh, so the last thing that I want to present is the 3D printed concrete. In Purdue University, <coughs> Professor Oleg and his student Fabian, uh, they have cast uh, a slab of 3D printed concrete for us and they cored some cylinders. We have tested uh, the, the, the static uh, response is, is very different than plain concrete. The coefficient variation is 11%. So for this study, because the coefficient variation of where was much more high, we just took the average strengths and we, we loaded the, 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 the fatigue test based off of that. So we have this three codes, and we have the wet concrete, dry concrete, and reinforced concrete, and these X's are the 3D print, printed concrete. So the 3D printed concrete is working well under fatigue, at least the same as the plain concrete that we have. And the, what the range is very high, and that's because of the variation in the strengths. So the conclusion is that the loading protocol we need a we need a I mean standard for testing for con fatigue of concrete. We need to guesstimate that F prime C. The reinforcement uh, has an effect. 3D printed concrete has a considerable fatigue capacity, and. For the future in this investigation, so I said we need the standard for fatigue. Uh, we cast a few, I mean, two different ca concrete uh, to see the effect of aggregate size, aggregate type, and their hardness. We want to do the X-ray for uh, to to see the internal damage due to the uh, cyclic loading. With that said, thank you for listening.